Hello and welcome to another Reaper Block tutorial. Today we're going to make some synthetic reverbs, or actually impulse responses, that we can use within the Reaper's Reverb plugin. This one right here, and here's an example of one that I created earlier today. Now if I mute that reverb, here's how the original sound started out. It's actually really easy and it's quite a lot of fun. So let's uh, start with the beginning. I created this file by putting a blank MIDI item in, adding the pink noise generator plug into it, and then gluing it. I'll take the fade off and you can hear what this sound sounds like. Just two seconds of pink noise. I then add in a fade going right to the start and you can adjust the shape of this fade to make different types of uh, reverb sounds. So it decays a lot faster, and I think that's going to work well. Then we add in an EQ. You can use re-EQ. Um, I'm liking Nova for this, actually. I'm going to use the low-pass filter. I think I make this a smoother, or a, a less steep slope at 6 dB per octave. And uh, just going to move that and add that as a parameter in the uh, arrange view. Really simple, just add in a point and drag it down. And I tend to use a similar curve as my uh, volume fade. So it sounds like this now. And it doesn't have to go quite so far. Sounds good. Now let's do a low shelf with some dynamic EQ. I can probably overall turn down the gain a little bit there and also do a mid scoop. All right, so that's going to be a reverb. And let's just print it how it is now. Set my time selection to my item. I will render this. Oh, and the only other thing I've done here is this track is turned down to minus six. Uh, you could actually go even further. But anyways, minus six, and it's sounding like this. Sounds pretty good hitting about minus 17 on the master. So I'll render that. Time selection, and I'm putting it into the same folder as this project. Let's call this IR01. And we're matching all the settings and we're going to dither because we're going from 32 to 24 bit. I'll render that. All right, now we'll go over to our testing area here. Close this, put on reverb, and I will select my IR01 file. And in here, I'm going to apply the minus 18 uh, dB gain option. This other one normalized to minus 18 can also be helpful for certain sounds. Kind of depends on how loud that source sound is or that impulse response is. So let's hear it now. So that's pretty decent, really. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty basic sound, but I, I think that would probably work pretty well. Just a matter of changing the level going to it, maybe adding a little more EQ to it, things like that. Inside the Reverb plugin, we can change some things. Like if we want this to start a little bit later, we can add in a delay in the pre-reverb section. Let's take a time selection, change our ruler to uh, seconds, 465, so we can put that at uh, 232 or so, 232. And let's see if uh, that works. Interesting, pretty weird, uh, but you get the idea. You can use that as a uh, as a delay. And you can see in the spectrogram that uh, this is now the start time of of where the, uh, the the reverb will start. It delays the whole signal. So let's improve this with some more effects. So we can keep the same thing. We could change the length. We can make it shorter or longer. We could change that EQ automation. But what I will do next is add in some modulation. So I'm going to use, I kind of like this Tal uh, Chorus LX plugin. I'm going to set the wet about 75%. And we'll just keep it on Chorus 1 mode for this.
I want the volume to be roughly the same as it was before. They're on minus 17.5. That's cool. We'll just quickly render this. And we'll call this IR02. And to get this to show up in the browser again, or in the, in the plugin, we can either click Browse here or just open and close this plugin. And that will refresh the browser here. And we'll go over to our testing area. So now there's a little more movement in the tails. Let's go back to IR1. And IR2. You mostly hear it on this last note. There's just a little more left and right movement. You know, that's the whole thing. You start with pink noise or white noise. Uh, you filter it. You add some um, either volume automation or fades. Uh, add in some effects to make it sound cool. You usually want to do some sort of uh, EQ. Let's hear how this sounds if we just bypass these effects. Print it again without that EQ. And this is IR03. I'll put no EQ. We'll hear how this sounds. You can see the spectrum is way different. Which doesn't really sound bad, but it's less interesting. It definitely doesn't sound like a real space. Not that the other ones really did. A real space will attenuate highs before it attenuates lows. And that's why we do that EQ curve. It's a lot of trial and error just experimenting. Don't forget about this minus 18 dB gain here because uh, if you don't have auto mute turned on, it's gonna blow up your speakers. Things can get really loud really fast by doing this. All right, so that's how you would build a reverb just with uh, pink or white noise. So next, let's take this. I'm gonna snap this right to there. And I'm gonna shrink this down so it's like one millisecond long or so. I have to gain this up a little bit, I think. We just want a little click, kind of. And super short. All right, now with this, we can put on a delay plugin or route it through some hardware or something like that. So I'll just take Echo Boy Jr., put that on the track. And right now, this is going to be the only plugin on the track. I'm going to set it to wet, and I'll set this to... I'll set this to 16th notes. Lots of feedback. Sure. And maybe a little bit of saturation. So let's see how much time we actually need for this to decay. So we'll go to about here. And I'll render that. So IR04, and this is delay. And now we have an impulse response built from a delay. And we're going to load that in here. Now you can see the spectrum is totally different. You're only getting sounds at those repeats. And this is where we might want to use the normalize to minus 18 instead of the apply minus 18 gain. It's already kind of low level. Now we can do this, and that bumps it up a little bit. So let's hear how this sounds now. And if we want to manipulate this, we have a few other options. So we can go to the Add button and set this to Trim Gain Stretch. This is a two second long impulse response. We can change that by changing the max length here. There we go. Let's just set this to one by typing in 1000. And we can also take off the, uh, the starting bit. We can change the start position uh, to four milliseconds. I think our original sound was about four milliseconds. One millisecond, but whatever. We, we can adjust kind of the start position of this. So that's at four milliseconds. We can set this to 100 and kind of tweak where this uh, actually starts. 
You can also use pre-silence to delay it further, which can be a little bit weird. We can also change the stereo width. We can make it a little bit wider by uh, increasing, I guess this is like a, like a mid-side sort of processing where it's reducing the center channel. We could solo this. So here's that one. Set this to zero, now it's mono. And we can set this to minus one, reversed stereo. We can set this to minus two and it's reversed and wider. We can also change the gain here. So we can make that louder or quieter. We can stretch this and this gets kind of interesting. So let's set this to 0 0.5 and now it's going to play twice as fast. And we can set this to 1.5 and now it's going to play slower. And it does apply like pitch shifting to that. So if we set this to three, it's going to be much longer. It's also going to be lower pitched. Pretty cool. And of course, listen to that in context with everything else. I know it will be mentioned in the comments that you can generate a test tone and deconvolve with the reverb plugin. I'm not a fan of how that turns out. I have better results doing it this way, using a very short pink or white noise clip, sending that through a device, removing the first couple milliseconds of that recording and using that as an impulse response. I get a better frequency response than using the test tone. I don't know why, but that's just what I found. So there you go. I think that's enough stuff to get you guys in trouble. You can have a lot of fun with this, making your own library of impulse responses. If you want to share them with me, that would be awesome. This is a lot of fun to do. It's cool to experiment with, you know, just throw any kind of plugin on it. You can make your reverbs any length you want. If you find a cool sound, maybe make different variations. So you have like a, a half second long, one second, two second, 10 second long reverbs and have different types of automation curves and things like that you know, make up a library of reverb sounds that nobody else has. It's a lot of fun and I hope you try it out yourself. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.